I have tried many hallucinogens, ranging from blotter, microdots, psilocybe cubensis, and have even picked psilocybe tampanensis from cow patties in central Florida. These have all served to distort my sense of reality, but I was never able to achieve a full out of body experience from them. Then I was introduced to salvia. A friend of mine attained an ounce of 10 times from an online retailer and offered me a couple grams to smoke. I was told that it was, at that time, a legal hallucinogen and was therefore not very convinced of its potential power. Surely something legal could not create an out-of-body experience. He insisted otherwise, so I agreed to try it. That evening, I arrived at my house and set the scene for my mind-shattering departure. Looking at the dark green tinted substance, it had a slight greasiness to it. I opened the small Ziploc baggie and smelled it. It smelled like tea, and looked like tea. Very finely ground vegetative matter. I was not impressed. My friend who gave it to me was a seasoned psychonaut. I trusted his word, but this stuff just looked pitiful. I figured at most I might see some pretty colours, or a calm body high, maybe some closed eye visuals. I settled down with my bubbler, with the lights dimmed. Some trance music was playing in my headphones. I was all alone except for my dog, that was asleep on his bed in the corner of the room. With a loosely packed bowl, I took a normal sized hit and breathed in deeply, and swiftly exhaled. The salvia exhibited a rather minty aftertaste. A strange sense of familiarity took hold, almost like deja vu. After setting the bubbler down, I leaned back against my bed and closed my eyes. The first sensation was that something was indeed happening. It felt like I was on an aeroplane taking off from a runway. A series of visuals immediately formed in the distant background. An array of mountains stretching across the horizon appeared. They were growing in size and cascading towards me rapidly. More mountainous arrays followed behind and above the initial array were offset slightly so that their peaks were in line with valleys of the ones beneath. Seconds passed and I was enveloped by the impact of these visuals. I then found myself transported to some kind of arena. There was a massive dome covering everything, with colourful lines running vertically from the floor to the ceiling, terminating into a single point at the top of this enormous structure. A lively commotion seemed to be happening all around me, but I could not focus on anything. Then, a series of green vines started growing from beneath my field of view. Meandering up, they were very much organic. Laughing, I grabbed onto these vines and felt them physically. Smaller shoots would unfurl and twirl around my hands. I felt weightless and could climb higher and higher. Sadly, the vision started to fade and I opened my eyes to find myself in my room, hands in front of me, making climbing gestures, hoping to grasp onto this newfound fleeting trip I had been on. I wanted more. With haste, I grabbed my bubbler and took a second hit and placed it down. This time I kept it in for longer. I so very much wanted to return to wherever that place was. An intense giggling took hold of me and I leaned over and slumped onto the floor. Before my very eyes, a sprawling city erupted from my carpet. Minuscule in size, it had a bustling sense of industry and sound coming from it. Tiny people rushed into the streets and a parade ensued. Crowds of these little people hurried towards me and cheered at me from below. My presence was the pinnacle of this affair and I was their god. They were full of delight and praise and they threw their hands up at my giant grinning face. The feeling was magical. Moments passed and they began to slowly vanish. I could tell they were sad to see me go. I can only assume I was vanishing from their perspective as well. After the city disappeared entirely, I softly ran my hands over the carpet. I missed them. I sat against my bed and pondered these events for about half an hour. Completely astonished, I still wanted more. I decided I wanted to dive as deep as I could go. Grabbing my bubbler, I emptied out the ash and packed it tightly with as much salvia that could fit. Taking several deep hits, 
I held the last one in as long as possible and laid back onto my bed. Immediately, a crushing sense of doom took hold. The walls in my room started to molt layers of thin, rubbery, transparent sheets. They sloppily draped over my paralysed body, and I felt myself being rolled up like a spool of tape. My last thoughts were of dread. I pictured all that I knew, my dog, my life, everyone in this world, were being crushed in between the layers of this winding motion, and it was all my fault. I had the sense that my entire life was just a single thought, and this oblivion I was headed towards was inevitable. There was no more me anymore. Well, not my body, but I still had awareness. Even that seemed to shed its value. I was simply a helpless observer, being torn and twisted by this unknown force. The binding of this vortex became so dense, I must have come to the realisation that this was how it has always been, and this is how it will forever be. I succumbed to this, whatever it was. A floating point in space and time, the starless universe shrouded around me, and I was completely naked spectacle of a being devoid of all emotion. Slowly, waves of energy started flowing over me, pushing me softly from side to side, rhythmically, and I felt calm. An emergent phenomenon started to coincide with the waves, and I could hear music, like itself pixelated back into place at this steady beat, and I opened my eyes. Laying in my bed, I could hear the trance music playing in my headphones, and I sat up to inspect them. Pulling them away from my ears, there was a resistance. A magnetic force was pulling the headphones back onto my head. What looked like fiber optic cables in a colorful matrix, like a Chinese finger trap, extended from each side of the headphones and into my ears. Still tripping out my mind, I placed them back onto my ears. I was not afraid anymore. I reached for my bubbler and took another hit. That's when it pulled me back in. A swirling wormhole manifested in my view and I was shot into it with amazing speed. The inner walls were a shimmering rainbow of geometric elegance, and while tunnelling at light speed, ebbing and flowing for eons into its sublime corridor, I felt no fear. This intense flight ended by ejecting me into a vast landscape. In the far distance, I could make out a towering mountain. From the peak to its base, there was a perfectly vertical crevice separating the mountain into two halves. Looking up to the summit, there was a brilliant, blinding star perched above the middle of the crack. The light it emitted was so bright, it hurt my eyes as I witnessed it. The rays pierced through my squinting eyelids and were so bright, I could still see the star clearly, even with my eyes forcefully closed. This vision passed suddenly, and I was pulled back into darkness. I now felt a slow, tumbling sensation. My vision came too and I saw an immeasurable, monochromatic wheel turning about. This wheel seemed to have an infinite depth to it, and it was all-encompassing. There were struts that divided the wheel into sections, and indescribable happenings unfolded within each section. Some appeared to have organic, blobular objects, dividing and morphing with themselves. Other sections seemed mechanical, with gears and rods rotating harmonically. I felt myself being gravitated towards one of these sections. As I fell in, I could see endless window panes churning forth around me. These windows seemed to be slices of events from never-ending timelines. Falling further in, I could see a familiar timeline. My universe, my dog, my bed, my life. I drifted into it and became myself again. Waking up to this reality, I opened my eyes and sat up. My dog was happily asleep on his bed. I smiled. Still feeling very groggy and drenched in sweat, I got up to turn on the lights, hoping to stabilise myself. I got up and turned them on. Then I realised that I just thought I'd turn on the lights, when actually I didn't do anything. I felt stuck in some kind of loop. I kept visualising myself getting up to turn on the lights and acting it out but finding myself still sitting in my bed. This was a very uneasy situation. A kind of anxiety took over me. I had to break this loop. 
I adamantly made myself get up and turn the lights on, and finally, they were on. I figured that this was enough for the night, and after an hour passed, I was back to my normal self. I remember falling asleep, wondering how this unbelievably potent substance was legal. The next couple of days were pleasant, a glowing calmness consumed me. The next week, I attempted to try salvia again, but was unfortunately my last. I took only a single hit. I remember seeing an ominous open eye visual. A mandala appeared in front of me and solidified itself into my visual field. In the middle of this mandala was an opening. Three undefined beings peered in from the opening and gazed in towards me. No matter where I looked, the opening was locked dead centre of my field of view and I could not escape their gaze. I felt as if these beings were aware of my perception and I could not infer a friendly invitation from them. Their intentions did not seem evil, but certainly not friendly. Eventually, this uneasiness subsided, and I felt that Salvia was just too strange and unpredictable for me. I am happy to have experienced it though. I wish all who embark on their journey with this incredible herb a safe spiritual trip. Thanks for reading.